Right, I'm not a pervert. I've got to do one of these annoying disclaimer things. Are you ready? Can we have some of that annoying music, please? Ah, there we go. Right, so playing with propellers can be very dangerous. If you insist on doing it at home, make sure you wear eye protection. Also, never play about with high voltage equipment unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Okay, that is done. Right, well, hello there, everybody. Sam Strains here. Welcome back to the railway. Very excited today because it is experiment time again. Now, you might remember about a year ago, I built this propeller powered car, which was pretty cool. It went really fast and put on quite a spectacular display. But let's be honest, it's not really as hardcore as I wanted it to be. For a start, it's tiny, right? So if this thing crashes, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to destroy things. It's not going to destroy itself. That's no good. I want a challenge. I want a propeller car that if it crashes, there are going to be serious repercussions. It's also got these really silly tiny cordless motors. Now they are laughable, aren't they? I mean, no one is going to be frightened of those little things. It's also got these flimsy little propellers, just three blades, no ducts or anything like that. They couldn't, I hate this phrase, but they couldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding. It's really light, it only weighs 85 grams. I mean, I've got 040 tank engines that weigh more than that. That's not a man's weight, is it? And to top everything off, on the railway, it could only manage this many coaches, three coaches. That is absolutely useless. So today I've decided I'm going to build a propeller train to end all propeller trains. I want it bigger, heavier, faster, stronger. Don't know about faster, but hopefully it will tick all the other boxes. Right, so I'm about to show you what I've come up with. This device has already melted through its first set of wires. On its first ever test, these wires were completely destroyed because of the sheer amount of power this thing needs. So I've built it, it's ready to go. Let me show you some of its features. Introducing Salvador the Snail. And this thing is more serious. So the main component is this gigantic 12-bladed propeller. It's absolutely massive and it's designed for large model aircraft, so you know it's it's going to be quite serious. It's also got ducting around the fans to make it much more efficient, provided of course you can power it properly and I certainly have done that. I picked up this massive 60 watt motor, now bear in mind Backman motors, this is a Backman motor, they run at around 3 watts, this runs at 60, that's 20 times more powerful. It's not really an ideal motor for model aircraft but I needed one that could run on straight DC so that's why I've got that. It's an absolute monster, can't wait to see what that thing can do. It's going to be quite scary I should think. And yes, to make this even more dodgy the motor is propped up with a Hornby shed just for the extra safety factor there. It's also got all-wheel pickup as you can see I've designed these very flimsy but actually very functional pickups they do actually work on every single wheel so that's really good. On the early tests I just had four pickups instead of eight and it melted the wires and destroyed the wheels and I had to change them all so that wasn't very good. It's also got no circuitry on board so I can run it forwards and backwards and it's got these mysterious brackets at the front and the back so if you can guess what those are going to be for I will tell you later and I'm hoping it's going to be able to manage this many coaches now that is much more like it really crank this thing up to destruction levels if necessary and see what this monster can do right come on Sal what's his name Sylvester Salvador I don't know right let's do it let's try some coaches all right so there is Salvador down onto the track and to give you an idea of the size there is a little Hornby Peckett right so I've set up 10 coaches we're going to see if Salvador can manage those that seems like quite a lot but we will see we will see now the interesting thing is that the gauge master controllers here can only put out 12 volts at around one amp this thing old Salvador here old Sal can handle 24 volts at two to three amps which means that the gauge master is nowhere near powerful enough to run Salvador at his full potential but we will try it on the gauge master to start with although it'll probably cut out because it'll be overloaded First then, let's get these 10 coaches coupled to Salvador. I'm going to spin up his fan just to make sure that's working. And Salvador is much better at going this way than this way. Much more efficient forwards. And so yes, the snails are going backwards most of the time. Yes, I know it's a cock up. Let's not speak of that again. Right, let's spin these fans up then. Oh, better move the pecket. Don't want it getting chewed up in the blades of the propeller. Right, let's spin up this fan then. There we go. That's an incredibly low power. And even so, those blades look like they are really giving it some, don't they? Right, let's turn it up a little bit more and get it to reverse. Nice and steadily does it. Okay, <laughs> that was a little bit of a thud. Right, changing direction. We're going to need a lot more power going forwards to shift 10 coaches. But let's see if old Salvador the Snail can do it, shall we? Here we go. Right, low power then. Let's see what this can do. Here we go. All right, okay, took up the slack, but it's not managed it right now. Let's go up to 40% speed. Oh, starting to go, 50%. It's 
going to need a bit more. 60%. 70. And it's going 80. That's it. It's shifting 10 coaches at only 80% speed. And because it's a fan, it is speeding up. Look at it go. Now, it is very, very unbalanced around curves. So going at a curve at any sort of speed will cause problems. And now it's going uphill. It's stopping again. Let's go up to 100% speed. And yes, it's doing it. Look at that. 10 coaches on a gauge master, less than half power. It's not fast, but it is pretty powerful. So even that is beating some locos that I have. Oh God, now it's speeding up quite badly. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay, stop. It takes a long time to stop because it's heavy. But that's it, we have a coach test completed. Now let me try it on its own and find out how fast it can actually go around a curve before it tips over. Okay, running light, 50% speed test. I'm just gonna switch it on, here we go. Oh, that seems fast. Oh! Almost managed it, but even at 50%, it's way too fast. Now that is exciting. So it's very clear, we need straight track. And for that, I'm gonna have to build a brand new drag strip. Right, introducing the Sam's Trains Locomotive Drag Strip version 2.0 with some serious improvements. So the first challenge is how to start the thing because really I want the propeller to be at its desired speed before the loco starts. So I've got this here, this is an electromagnet which will hopefully grab onto this bracket, that's what that one's for. And when I turn off that electromagnet, the train should release and fly along the drag strip like this. There's about five meters of it too, so it's a good length. When it gets towards this end, the problem is no longer how do we speed this thing up but how do we slow this down so the first thing we have is an isolated bit of track using these plastic fish plates salvador won't have power after he's passed that point then a little bit further on there's another pair of plastic fish plates and then there's a final little stretch across which there is a resistor the idea being a little bit like on that flywheel video i made hopefully that resistor will draw power out of the propeller and hopefully slow it down or stop it in case we have a derailment just to make it a little bit safer Next, I've got this stretch of elastic which goes right across the track, as you can see. Hopefully that will catch the loco using this bracket here. And when it does, hopefully Sylvester will be thrown back up along the drag strip. And if I leave power on, the motor should spin up again and hopefully slow it down. So let's get Salvador onto the track, shall we? And push him back towards the electromagnet. I'll turn it on and connect it up to his back there. So hopefully that's got it. Let's give this a try with the Gage Master controller then, 100% speed. Let's start the fans. Let's ease us up to 100%. See what this does. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, maximum. Up to speed, kill the electromagnet in three, two, one, fire. Whoa, okay, okay. We have a casualty, folks. One of the snail's heads came off and dragged along the carpet as it came back. Oh, that was not pretty. Right, I wonder what speed we managed with that. Wow, right, okay, that was pretty cool. I'm quite excited about that. So looking back at the footage, yeah, that seemed quite fast. I've got confidence that we can get some extra speed out of this. It was so cool to see it bounce off that elastic and then decelerate itself back up the street. That was absolutely fantastic. So I can calculate the speed by filming Salvador past two points on this tape measure at high speed at 60 frames per second, 50 centimeters. I can count the number of frames, figure out the time and give us a rough speed. And I have done that, let me give you this. So that was two meters per second which translates to 4.5 miles an hour that's not too bad on the gauge master that's a scale speed of about 340 miles an hour which is pretty silly now as we could see the stopping is definitely not the problem the problem is power we don't have enough power the gauge master can only put out one amp we know that motor can handle two possibly a little bit more so i need to change controller i need to change power supply so the power supply I have in mind is this monster. Now this puts out 13 volts, which is just a tiny little bit more than a model railway controller, but it's capable of throwing out 25 amps. That's 25 times what that gauge master could. Now there's a problem with that, okay? Because if I just give that 12 volts at that full 25 amps straight away, this happens. 
<laughs> it's just way too powerful. It just throws Salvador over because that motor armature and the blades, they weigh quite a lot. The sudden acceleration just chucks it over. So I've got this little assembly here. It basically involves a power resistor and that will allow me to speed up the motor slowly through that resistor. And then when I push that red button, I get the full voltage and the full current going right through the system. And hopefully the loco won't tip over when I do that. And so with much more power to play with, let's give this a try. Let's get that electromagnet back on and give this another fire. All right, then the electromagnet's on. Let's hook this up. This could be very, very dramatic. I reckon this is going to be a huge improvement. OK, let's do this then. So through the resistor to start with, the resistor gets very hot. So I have to do this briefly. Let's spin up that motor. There we go. Push the red button. Oh, my God. And release. Oh, destruction. OK, we've got a bit of a casualty here. I think I'm going to need to make some repairs. Look, the pickups are mangled. Let's see if we can get in on those. Yeah, badly mangled pickups. And I think the tripod actually got shoved backwards, which means I wonder if it reached the end of the track and derailed when it hit those crocodile leads at the end. So I might just be able to move the tripod a touch closer and hopefully it won't do that again. The hook for the elastic came off. That probably didn't help, so it could have been quite an impact actually then. Right, well that needs to be stuck back on. Can't carry on without that. I'll do some repairs and we'll try again. All right, I've made repairs. I think everything's looking better now. I think I've already got a speed reading for this, but we'll do it one more time just for fun. Slow speed start. Red button pressing now. And release. Whoa. Wow. Yes, I didn't disconnect the power supply fully, but it really does throw that tripod out the way, doesn't it? Look at that, flings it a long way back actually. It's quite something. Okay, so this is getting quite dramatic now. So it threw that tripod quite a long way back. I'm gonna to have to try and weigh that down somehow to stop it jumping across. On the way back, it flipped off the track and did all sorts of damage to itself. The pickups were completely crumpled. I think they will be fine, by the way. I've managed to readjust them. They seem to be making contact again, which is good. But yeah, it's messy. I'm a bit scared now about putting more power into this because the faster it goes, the bigger the crashes are going to be. Maybe it's not going to last very long. On camera then, that did look a little bit faster, but was it faster based on the results? Yes, it was 2.7 meters per second, where it was just two before. That's six miles an hour. That's quite good. That's a good walking speed and that's a scale speed of 464 miles per hour now that number makes me happy it's also not looking its best now look at these snail heads yeah they're, they're starting to come off and get in the way i'm thinking about snipping them off but i'm going to try not to do that because i don't know if that's cruel or not who knows at this point Okay, so high current is fine, but we're only at 13 volts at the moment. The motor is designed for up to 24, and for that we need yet another change in power supply. I need to bring out the big guns now, so man, this should be interesting. Let's give it a try. So if you even think about trying this at home, I, I swear I will never reply to your comments again, because this is dodgy. Uh, now, don't even ask, don't even ask why I own something like this. It's better not to ask. <sighs> right. God, God, this weighs an absolute ton. This is a monster. Okay, I'm gonna set this thing up and then I'll, I'll talk you through. So this next section is very much a stunt. It is very dangerous, so please don't do this at home. I'm being very careful. I know exactly what I can and can't touch, and I do have some safety precautions in place to make sure that this is as safe as possible. I'm not gonna go into too much information on how to do this because I don't want people to replicate this at home, but very basically, this is an auto transformer. It allows you to select any voltage from zero to mains voltage, basically. I'm not gonna be going up to mains voltage, of course, because that would be insane. It would just blow the thing up, and I'm gonna have the voltage reading up here on the multimeter. Now then, let's turn this thing on and see what happens. Make sure I'm down to zero volts. Let's switch it on. Ah. Yes, that's one thing that does happen with this. This thing has such a high inrush current, it draws massive amounts of power when you turn it on, and it actually overloads the breaker and cuts power to the loft. Right, so I've got to go and get the power back on. I'll see you in a minute. Has that done the trick? I hope so. Well, the lights are on, so... <laughs> Nothing's in smoke and flames, so I think we're safe. Right, let's give this a go then. I don't want to go straight up to 24 volts because I have no idea what it's going to do. But let's get that electromagnet on. Let's get Salvador ready to go and see if we can creep up the voltage and see what it does. No red button this time because I can do it gradually. Here we go. All right, two volts. Three, four, five, six. 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh. Right, we have an issue. Yeah, it's vibrating so much that the wheels are breaking connection with the rails and stopping the thing from actually working properly. What can I do? Well, what I might do is try and put some more of these Jenga blocks under the track and hopefully that will support it a little bit. But maybe we've reached our limits here. Maybe it's just too unstable. Okay, so I've added some extra support. We'll see if that helps or not. Probably it won't actually, but we'll see. I think it might just be the instability of the, the thing itself. Let's try again then. Let's ease this up. See if you've got a better view than I have, so you'll be able to see if there's any arcing. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. Whoa! <laughs> Ouch. Well, I mean, I got to fifteen. I got to fifteen that time. I wonder what speed that was. Let's have a look at some more shots. Okay, that was insane, and as expected, yes, the crashes seem to be getting worse and worse, but the speed is still going up. I've just measured four meters per second. That's the biggest jump in speed we've seen. That's 8.3 miles an hour. <laughs> That's actual speed. Scale speed of 637 miles an hour. Now, that is quite something, isn't it? Now, I can't remember exactly what the record was before. I think we got over 10 miles an hour with that silly little propeller car, so I would really, really like to get up to that if I can with this big thing. But as I say, I, I, this, these crashes have got to be taking their toll on it, haven't they? How many more crashes like that can this thing stand before it just falls to pieces? So I think we'll do one last ditch effort. I'm going to turn the power right up as far as I can. I'll aim for 24 volts, but we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed this actually works and doesn't destroy the thing. Let's see. Oh dear. Yeah, I didn't catch it, unfortunately. I think I'm sure it will be repairable, but right now it looks like it's in quite the nasty mess. It crashed into that wall <laughs> at quite some speed. You can see the imprint where the electromagnet got slammed back into the wall. That is pretty nasty. I think I've done it in, folks. I think I've done it in. I mean, one of the snails is gone. I don't know. I don't know where. I think its head is behind me somewhere. I don't know where the rest of its body is. The other one here is sort of hanging off, but it's still attached. I've managed to glue the motor and duct assembly back on, but the rotor is kind of loose. The motor's come away from the ducting a bit so that the blades are getting really close to touching the edge. I think, unfortunately, we've had it, but I've got some speed results in and they make me pleased. They make me very, very happy. So we got down to just six frames to go between those two points of the tape measure, which gives us exactly what I wanted, I'm pleased to say. So that was 11.18 miles per hour. That is a scale speed of 850 miles per hour, which means I did it. So this thing may never run again. I mean, hopefully it will. I might do some tests with it in the future, see if the thing still works. How's it looking? The pickups are looking a little bit tired now. Some of them are a bit bent. The wheels have got sort of arc weld spots on them now, but they're not as bad as they were th with the previous experiment where I was going up to 60 volts or something stupid like that. Yeah, it's not looking too bad at all. So there we go. That was a fun experiment. I think overall, even though I've almost ruined it, I think I can get away with fixing it possibly. But despite that, I do think this is an improvement over the last propeller car. There's a definite element of danger. I mean, this thing is heavy. This is a big, heavy projectile to be flying off the track and crashing on the floor. And that brought me some joy. So hopefully it did you as well. Thank you for watching, though. I mean, if you've got any more crazy ideas for things I could try up here, please let me have them. I really do enjoy doing these. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. For now, though, thank you very much for your company. And I'll see you on the next one. All right. Cheers, folks.